Hey guys, it's me Lily. Welcome to my channel if you're new. So this was my first time reading Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. This is my first time reading the series at all. I literally finished this book this morning. I started reading this like last month. Not even joking, it took me weeks to get through this first half and then I read the second half in like three days, four days. The second half of this story, I was like really invested in it. Now I feel like like fucked, you know? As with all the videos for the books in this series, I vlogged reading it. I'll leave the time that you can skip to if you just wanna go straight into watching that. But I wanna tell you some of my overall thoughts. I'll try to keep this part brief. Honestly, I have to say, this is my favorite book in the series so far. Obviously, Voldemort is a huge theme in this book. I really loved learning about Voldemort's backstory and his history and finding out his motives and why he is the way he is learning about his parents i just really appreciated that like we spent so much time like actually learning about the main villain in this series he's always like very present in the other books but like from a distance if that makes sense he was very much in like the forefront of this story i feel like voldemort always like jumps out at the end being like ready to die and then he gets defeated and then he goes back into hiding and then it's like, oh no, a new problem, clearly connected to Voldemort, but then he doesn't pop out to the end of the book again being like, surprise, ready to die. Like, I feel like it's just like the same. And then this book, we actually like, while we didn't actually see Voldemort at all in this book, like there was no, like, did we? No. There was no like face off with him, like with the others. I don't know, It was he was very present in this book, but in a different way. One thing that I never mentioned that I think is really funny is that the whole like, first of all, the Half-Blood Prince being Snape, like what the fuck. I genuinely thought for like all of the book that Voldemort was the Half-Blood Prince. And then it turned out to be Snape, which is actually really funny when you think about the irony of Harry simultaneously talking up the Half-Blood Prince when he has his book. At the same time, he's like feuding with Snape. Um, Dumbledore's death. Dumbledore's death is one of the deaths that I actually knew about. Like, I knew he was gonna die at some point in this series. For some reason, I thought that I knew he died in the last book. Like, in my head, I was like, oh yeah, I know Dumbledore is gonna die, but he dies in the last book. Not sure why I was under that, like, dead set under that impression. So when Malfoy, like, came into his office and was like, I'm here to kill you, there was a moment where everything kind of clicked and I was like, oh fuck. Surely there's gonna be, like, one big main character, like, who dies and... I always thought it was gonna be Dumbledore. Now I'm like scared, like who's gonna die now? Someone's gonna die, I'm sure of it. The fact that I didn't even catch on to the fact that Malfoy's mission the whole time was to kill Dumbledore, how the fuck did I miss that? Cause I look back now and I'm like, like I should have definitely 100% figured it out when Ron drank that poison wine from Slughorn's office that was supposed to be a present for Dumbledore. Surely I should have been like, oh, someone's trying to kill Dumbledore. And then, hmm, who would want to kill Dumbledore? Maybe Voldemort. Oh, Voldemort gave Malfoy a task. I feel like it would have been the easiest thing to figure out and I just didn't figure it out. So I, do, I really don't want to talk too much about it. I'd rather just like you watch the vlog because I... I tell you like all my thoughts about everything there. Everything from previous books is starting to like come together now and like click into place. I can already tell that like when I finish this series, I absolutely want to reread it at some point in the future because I think this is a series that like when you find out everything at the end, rereading it from the start, it would be like a completely different experience because you know everything that's about to happen. You know everyone's motives and seeds are planted. There's so many seeds planted in the first five books wow did i really just check in the first five books that like it would be so fun to go through and read everything knowing everything i'm gonna leave it now for the vlog so without further ado the vlog am i the only one who thinks it's like it doesn't make any sense that malfoy decided to put the invisibility cloak on harry turning him invisible and paralyzed so that he'd be sent home on the train instead of just stealing the cloak don't you think if Malfoy, of all people, had Harry paralyzed and he had his invisibility cloak in his hand, that he wouldn't just fucking steal the invisibility cloak and Harry would probably never be able to get it back? He had the perfect opportunity to just steal that invisibility cloak and he didn't take it. And I feel like that's not a very Malfoy thing to do. So Harry's ended up with the old potions textbook that used to belong to the Half-Blood Prince. Now I can already tell this is going to be important because the book is literally called Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. So of course I'm going to tell you like who I suspect it to be. I'm going to go with the obvious choice and just say the Half-Blood Prince is Voldemort. First of all, he goes around calling himself Lord. 
I feel like anyone who would go around making people call him Lord would totally be the same kind of person to nickname themselves as a prince. Everyone knows that Voldemort's a half-blood. Maybe it's Vol- I reckon it could be Voldemort and then he's gonna end up learning all of this stuff. Harry's gonna be studying his notes from school and then end up using them all against him in the future. Honestly, that's my new theory. Harry started taking private lessons with Dumbledore. Dumbledore is showing him memories in the Pensieve, right? This guy from the ministry went to Tom Riddle's mum's house, her name's Merope, and she was living with her brother Morphin and her dad Marvolo. The family is described as being like really grotty. They're pure blood wizards, right? And they think they're so amazing and like better than everyone because their ancestors are Slytherin, but they are literally the grottiest family like ever. They are literally so, like obviously I've never seen a photo of them, but like you can just tell that they're like greasy as fuck. When we were introduced to Morphin, I just pictured like a rat like dipped in dirt. You know those like chocolate coated ice creams where they like, it's like a soft serve ice cream and they like tip it and they dip it in chocolate and it comes out. That's like Morphin except like dirt. Look, Marope's story is kind of sad, not gonna lie. You can't help but feel kind of bad for her, but also like you're actually not that good of a person either, considering what she did. That, and also Dumbledore has this like blackened hand. It's been injured from something. He was wearing Marvolo's ring. He got it around the same time that his hand got ruined. They're obviously connected in some way, but I guess we'll find out later. Katie Bell from the Quidditch team got cursed by this necklace that she was delivering to Hogwarts. It was seen in Borgen and Bot's cursed. Basically, she was under the Imperius curse, delivering something. I think it was the thing that Malfoy was pointing to in Borgen and Bot's in the beginning of the book. When he pointed and he said to the store guy, like, make sure you keep that one. So I've been forgetting to vlog while reading. I've just been writing them down in my notes. So Harry started doing lessons with Dumbledore. He showed him this memory going into the orphanage where Tom Riddle was living at before he came to Hogwarts. You know when you watch a horror movie and there's like a really creepy yet insanely intelligent kid and they're just- You know what I mean? They'll say like one line and you're like straight up, fuck this kid, like I'm out, nah. That's basically Voldemort as a kid. I don't know, there's something really unsettling. What else happened? Oh, Ron and Hermione. They are at that like petty high school drama age, but like- and I think reading it now, I honestly like can't with the fucking angst. I'm starting to get really confused as to whether Snape is trustworthy or not. I don't know, he's just like saying shady things. And also like, why the fuck would you make an unbreakable vow to the other side? You would only do that for the side that you were actually loyal to, surely. Unless he knew that saying no when they asked would arise suspicion. And he made that unbreakable vow to the dark side so that they never would question his loyalty to them. I really would like to know what he has done or said to make Dumbledore so absolutely sure that he can trust him because... So Voldemort killed his own dad and then blamed it on his uncle. You know, just Dark Lord things. Anyway, so we're going through more memories. He asked Slughorn about Horcruxes and then Slughorn tampered with his own memory so that Dumbledore wouldn't be able to know what he actually said to Tom Riddle. It was like a really shitty attempt at altering a memory, so it was really obvious that he did it. So now it's Harry's job to get the real memory of Slughorn. So now it's really important that Harry finds out what the real memory was because they can't keep doing lessons until they find out what Slughorn actually said to him. Is this Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince or is this Harry Potter and the half ass attempt to get this fucking memory? Because, bitch, he went into his office and was like, oh, Slughorn, can you tell me about Horcruxes? What do you think he's going to be like? Oh, yes. <laughs> Voldemort once asked me the same question. Let me sit you down and tell you my secrets. Like, I feel like Dumbledore should be giving private lessons to Hermione. Because she's the only person here with some fucking sense. So it turns out that the Defense Against the Dark Arts job actually is cursed. They went back into the Pensieve and they looked at this memory from... Voldemort was like half a lizard, half a man. Like, I don't know, he was in that weird, like... This is when Voldemort was going through, like, snake puberty. And he came back to Hogwarts, asked for the job as the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher. And Dumbledore was like, nah. And before Voldemort left, he did that like little thing in Dumbledore's office and then obviously cursing the job. And now every teacher that's worked there has not stayed in that job for more than a year. So if he's cursed the job, then I guess that means Snape isn't going to stay for longer than a year either. I wonder what'll happen. Because like, he'll either leave or maybe he'll die. Because like, I can't see any way that he would spend so long trying to get that position and then just go back to being like a potions teacher or something after one year like there's no way and we've still got one book left hmm. i reckon he's either gonna die or he's gonna leave the school uh, something's gonna fucking happen i swear to god so i just got home nobody's here amazing harry finally got the memory off slughorn the way he did it by the way is like 
so manipulative, but like I love it. I'm gonna live read this chapter because I feel like we've spent so much fucking time building up to this one memory and it's like so important that some shit's probably gonna go down and if I wanna capture my reaction to anything, it's probably gonna be this chapter, maybe. Okay, I've heard the term Horcruxes before, right? Like I'd heard of them, but I didn't know like what they really were. It's when you split your soul and put part of your soul inside an object so that you, if you die, your soul is still like earthbound and undamaged. So you do it by killing people. It rips your soul in half. Wait, does that mean every time you kill someone that you rip your soul and make a Horcrux? Or you have to kill someone to make a Horcrux? Oh my god, fucking Tom Riddle like trying to find out exactly how to do it. Gross. Fucking hell, splitting his soul like seven times, bitch, calm the fuck down. So he clearly made seven Horcruxes then. Okay, so the diary was a Horcrux, which figures. Okay, so one of them's already destroyed then, if the diary is, a, is one of them, they've already destroyed it. And then obviously the ring, the ring that Dumbledore had, surely that's gonna be one. Yeah, the ring, he just said, the ring. So the diary and the ring are destroyed. Yeah, but surely that the Slytherin necklace is another Horcrux as well. He killed that woman for Hufflepuff's cup and the Slytherin necklace, which belonged to his mum. So if he made his uncle's ring a Horcrux, then surely he made the necklace one as well. Hufflepuff's cup, the locket, the ring, the diary. That's four of them already. Six, seven. So there's three left. Dumbledore thinks Nagini is like the fifth Horcrux, or the sixth, the last one. Because if he got something of Ravenclaws or Gryffindors, there still leaves a sixth one. Because apparently you can put your soul into a live object. Voldemort is, was still at least one Horcrux short of his goal of six when he entered your parents' house with the intention of killing you. He seemed to have reserved the process of making Horcruxes for particularly significant deaths. So. He's saying that he thinks Voldemort was intending to make his final Horcrux with Harry's death. As we know he fa no, this doesn't make any sense. As we know he failed, he might have- he used Nagini to kill an old muggle man. And it might have occurred to him then to turn her into his last Horcrux. I feel like Voldemort wouldn't use some old muggle man's death to make his final Horcrux. Like, why would he do that? Oh, but then again, because remember how he was like- Yeah, no, and he was like really weak, he like didn't have a body left. No, but he didn't have a body to make a final Horcrux, right? I'm really confused about how, how all this works. Seems to have an unusual amount of control over her, even for a past while. Holy fuck! Oh my god, no, you know what? What if Harry's a Horcrux? It would not be the snake. Voldemort would not turn her into a Horcrux over some old muggle man dead. No, because- okay, no, hear me out, hear me out. I reckon I'm- Fuck, I actually think I figured it out. So, basically, Voldemort, when he killed Harry's parents... Oh my god, okay, my- okay, my fucking theory back in book, like, what was it, two Chamber of Secrets? And I was like, okay, I bet that part of Voldemort's powers went into Harry so that he was able to speak parcel tongue when he killed his parents and when he gave him a scar. And then in the other book, Goblet of Fire, he could- no, was it Goblet of Fire or Order of the Phoenix? I literally can't like get my book straight, but he was literally like connected to Voldemort for like an entire book and he had to do Occlumency and all of that bullshit and he could see into the mind of the snake as well. Oh my god, no, but what if they are, what if they're both Horcruxes and that's why they're all connected because they all have part of his fucking soul in them because if Harry could see, remember how he had that dream of him like being Nagini the snake and then he dreamt that he, that the snake attacked Arthur Weasley, like it ended up not being a dream and like the snake actually did attack Arthur Weasley but Harry saw it happen. He could feel Voldemort's emotions and he also was connected to the snake, he could see what the snake was doing. So if Voldemort made... If Voldemort put a piece of his soul in the snake and into Harry, then surely all three of them would be connected because they're live. Like, it's not like putting your soul into an object. It's like putting your soul into a living thing. It would merge with the pre-existing soul, surely, like to a degree, or they'd live in the same body together. 
Yeah, that fucking makes so much sense. And because, oh my god, because he killed Harry's parents. So he was totally able to turn Harry into a Horcrux. He just killed his parents. Fuck. Oh my god, did I just figure out like the biggest plot twist of all? Like Harry's a fucking Horcrux. So they can't kill Voldemort until all of the Horcruxes are destroyed, basically. Wait, but if he, if he has to kill, but he can't kill Voldemort if he's a Horcrux, because then he'll have to die as well. If they have to destroy all the Horcruxes, yeah, Harry, wouldn't Harry have to die? Unless they can kill Voldemort and then the final bit of his soul will just continue to live in Harry forever. That's if he is a Horcrux, because like, this is just me speculating. Although I think it's pretty fucking like, dead on if I do say so myself, but who knows. And also Dumbledore is explaining all of this shit and he's not saying anything about Harry. He literally pointed out the fact that Voldemort would have made a Horcrux with Harry's death. See, what I don't understand is Voldemort's like, oh yeah, Voldemort would only make Horcruxes out of significant things or significant deaths. So he would have made a Horcrux from your death, but he didn't because he didn't kill you. So instead he made a Horcrux out of a snake when he killed an old muggle man. For no reason. That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, obviously not. He wouldn't not make one when he killed Harry's parents and then make one years later when he kills some random muggle. I don't know. I feel like if Harry was a Horcrux, Dumbledore would have figured it out on his own because, like, if he's come this far... I don't know. I feel like if I was able to come to this conclusion, like, surely Dumbledore could have as well, but he's not saying anything about it. So maybe, like, it's not plausible for Harry to be one and I'm just, like, confused. <laughs> Page 511, he literally says, he's explaining about how Harry has the power of love and Voldemort doesn't have that, so this is his advantage over Voldemort. You have flitted into D Lord Voldemort's mind without damage to yourself, but he cannot possess you without enduring mortal agony. What he just said, I feel like is literally just saying without saying, you're a Horcrux. Pointing out the fact that Harry can see into Voldemort's mind. He like it's really painful for Voldemort to try and like go into Harry's mind But Harry can go into Voldemort's mind without a problem, right? He was in such a hurry to mutilate his own soul that he never paused to understand the incomparable power of a soul that is untarnished and whole Right, of course because Harry was a baby at the time, right? So like you can't compare Voldemort's like fucked like split into eight million pieces soul compared to a baby's soul. But he's saying Voldemort was in such a hurry to mutilate his own soul, meaning break his soul apart some more. Pointing it out, like, so obviously, and like, n he's still not saying shit. Like, he's- I don't understand. Like, am I wrong? Because I feel like this is so fucking obvious. The idea that Harry could be a, a Horcrux is not occurring to either of them. He broke his soul apart when he killed his parents. Harry has the scar, he feels Voldemort's emotions, he can see into the fucking snake. If the snakes are Horcrux, then that just makes like all the more sense. Why are neither of them acknowledging that? Man, what the fuck is going on? Am I wrong? Am I going insane? I guess I'll find out at the end of the book, but like surely I'm fucking correct. Surely. It makes like too much sense not to. And like, if that's not the plot twist, then like I should fucking write the Harry Potter series. But then again, my Crookshanks theory made a lot of sense and that wasn't correct either, so we'll see. So I just finished reading chapter 25. Snape is the person who overheard Professor Trelawney's prophecy. Snape is the person who went and told Voldemort. That's why Voldemort went and killed Harry's parents. Like, Snape is the person who told him and that's the reason Harry's parents are dead. And then for him to also like completely hate Harry once he gets to school. Dumbledore told Harry that Snape was like, it was like one of his biggest regrets, which like, what the fuck? He hated James. And also he's been a massive asshole to Harry. Like literally the entire time he's been at Hogwarts. Like what the fuck do you mean it was one of his life's biggest regrets? I'm sorry, but like, I don't trust Snape. He is not on our side. I really feel like the evidence that he's actually working for the for the other side and not with the Order of the Phoenix is really just like stacking up at this point because I don't understand why Dumbledore trusts him so much. I just don't get it. Like, I just don't get it. Okay, so this is where we are now. Um, I just finished reading the chapter where Harry and Dumbledore go into that cave and they get the Horcrux. And there was like a cave full of fucking dead bodies and poison water and he was like force feeding Dumbledore poison water that like, 
I don't know. I don't know what was happening, whether he was like in heaps of pain. or The lightning struck tower. Now I'm guessing someone's gonna fucking die because look at this shit right here. The dark mark. Someone's gonna die. All right, off we go. Let's do this. We'll wait. I'll wait and then we'll see if I'm back. So I'm back. So shit has kicked off. Like well and truly. Okay, so Malfoy's mission this whole time was to kill Dumbledore. Which first of all, like I'm not sure how the fuck I missed that this whole book. Now that you think about it, Malfoy isn't a killer, clearly. Like he's shaking, he's fucking shitting his pants. The thing that, okay, the thing that like I'm pressed about now is the fact that if Malfoy's mission this whole time from Voldemort was to kill Dumbledore, then the unbreakable vow that Snape made with um, Malfoy's mum was that he would kill Dumbledore if Malfoy didn't. And he made an unbreakable vow like what the fuck this oh this proves that Snape is working against Dumbledore and here's the thing okay here's the thing I know that Dumbledore is gonna die in this series that's something that I was spoiled for for some reason like I've genuinely believed that it's gonna happen in the end of Deathly Hallows but now I'm kind of like it must happen in this book and it must be Snape or Malfoy that kills him Malfoy has him cornered he's weak Snape's made a vow to kill him if Malfoy doesn't yo if Dumbledore has to die in this book I'm actually gonna be fucked like why I don't know unless Dumbledore Dumbledore knows that Snape made the unbreakable vow and if he told him, but I feel like that's highly unlikely. Like, I'm just gonna keep reading, we'll see. He's not gonna do it. Snape's gonna do it. He's not gonna do it. Fuck. Well, now that there's Death Eaters in the room, like, of course he's gonna do it now because if he doesn't. Snape is here. Oh my god, he's like begging with Snape. What the f Severus, please. He literally killed him. He did it. I... Well, who's gonna die in Deathly Hallows now? I don't know why I'm shocked, because, like, I knew Dumbledore was going to die, but, like, I genuinely believed up until fucking right now when he's died. Like, I thought it was going to happen in the end of the final book. I thought that was going to be, like, the big death at the end of the last book, like, Dumbledore dies, you know what I mean? So who's going to be the big surprising death now? Fucking Ron? In my head, no one told me this, but, like, this is what I assumed, right? And since I'd assumed it for so long, this is what I, like just believed happened, like I thought I knew this was gonna happen, that it was gonna be like Voldemort, Harry and Dumbledore at the end of Deathly Hallows and then Voldemort was gonna kill Dumbledore. He was so sure that he was like working, that Snape was trustworthy and like, you know what, to a certain degree, as much as I was starting to distrust him, a part of me was like, well, if Dumbledore trusts him, there must be something that's gonna get revealed later, but like, what the fuck is that? And he begged him as well, like, when he was about to die, he literally begged him. That's fucked up. And he, oh my god, the fact that he, like, before he had a chance to defend himself, he decided to hide Harry, like, to immobilize him so that he wouldn't be able to move and do anything stupid. He gave up his final chance to, like, protect himself so that he could protect Harry. I don't know how to feel. So I decided to keep reading. The Horcrux was literally fake. This whole time. Like, everything they went through was for a fake Horcrux. Dumbledore weakened himself by drinking that potion, like, for nothing. And who the fuck is R.A.B.? And also, Snape is the Half-Blood Prince. This whole time, it was him. The book belonged to his mother, Eileen Pince. Prince? Pince. Which explains why the book was so old that, like, it didn't belong to anyone around Harry's dad's age or people like that. Because, like, I guess that's why, like, I wouldn't suspect Snape is because... I knew it couldn't have been someone from that generation. And that's where he got his nickname, Half-Blood Prince, because his mum was a witch, his dad was a muggle, and then he's a half-blood, and so he called himself Half-Blood Prince. So, I finished the book. Bill got attacked by Greyback, the werewolf. The whole drama with Molly Weasley being like, oh, he was gonna get married as well. Like, I'm, she's like crying. And Fleur is like, what do you mean gonna get married, bitch? Like, we're still getting married. I bet everybody was thinking that Fleur was just like shallow as and like wouldn't, not gonna lie, I kind of expected Fleur to just stop giving a fuck about Bill and like disappear shadily after his face got mangled. But apparently she's not shallow. Which honestly seems like a plot twist in itself. Funeral. The funeral was a really beautiful image. And the fact that he was buried at Hogwarts as well is really nice. The first headmaster to actually be buried at Hogwarts because 
Apparently none of the others were. Oh, also Harry broke up with Ginny in order to protect her because he knows that Voldemort would go after her. But I realized they've not spoken about Harry and Ginny at all. Honestly, I feel like it came out of fucking nowhere. I don't know if I just missed any and all hints in previous books. I know in the last one there was kind of like, he was like building more of a relationship with her, but it, like I already know that they end up together, right? I don't know, to me it felt really fucking random and out of nowhere. Look, it probably could have just been me not paying attention to the other books, cause like I know there was something in the other book, like some, I don't know, there was one scene that I remember, but like I think maybe I've been too preoccupied with other plot points. Anyway. That's it for the vlog. Thank you for watching. Those are all my thoughts for Half-Blood Prince, the sixth and second last book in the Harry Potter series. To be honest with you, I'm kind of like freaking out about reading the, the final book. Um, like literally, what the fuck? Like what's gonna happen now? There's no Dumbledore. Harry doesn't want to go back to Hogwarts, so we're gonna have a Harry Potter book not set at Hogwarts. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.